Welcome back to another episode of Simply Unprofessional. I am your host, Webby, and joining me tonight, we got Devin. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? And we might be graced with Austin's presence a little later uh, if he manages to get his ass out of traffic. So we'll see. He might just pop in. We don't know. So, Devin, there's a couple things I want to talk about this week. All right. Um, So... I'm going to get yelled at if I don't mention and we don't talk a little bit about Jessica Jones, mainly because season two comes out, I believe, March. He's going to yell at you, though. Well, I mean, some people actually liked the show. Uh, I do have some listeners who do. They have been inquiring as to if I'm planning on doing a Jessica Jones review, uh, which did you not we like did show? back when we were Tavern Talk. Uh, we did do a Jessica Jones review. I don't think we've done one since we've become SU. I, well, okay. I'm conflicted about season one of Jessica Jones. There were aspects of it that I liked, and mm-hmm. there were aspects of it that I did not care for. Now, a lot of people that I know who have watched it really enjoyed the show. I know a couple people, Clay, <laughs> Uh, who absolutely thought the show was dog shit, hated it. Doesn't uh, he's not even going to give season two a chance because he dis- he disliked season one so much. Um, I being a Marvel fan, I will watch season two. I am curious to how they'll do it. Um, out of the Netflix Marvel shows, <sighs> it's. I'll say it's probably tied for my least favorite of the four. I guess five, technically, if you count the Defenders as, a, as its own. Um, so, yeah. Are you counting Punisher, too? Oh, shit. That'd be six. That'd be six. I, yeah, I forgot that came out. Yeah, I mean, it's still tied. It's 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 low on on the totem pole for me. See for me, there's nothing touching the first season of Iron Fist. That was the that was the drizzling dog shit. Says what that well, was. Well, see that that's what I feel is tied with. No, that, that's I wouldn't even do that. Like so, originally, this is how I felt about Jessica Jones. I, I watched it twice. Okay, and at, at the I behest am, of my other friend, I am giving it. I'm, I'm. I just finished watching the first episode, which I thought was a great episode. Don't get me wrong. First episode, real strong episode. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I am rewatching the series right now in in lieu of it coming out um, on March eighth. So, but what what did you think initially of Jessica Jones? I initially how I felt about Jessica Jones was I didn't. It wasn't so much I didn't like Jessica Jones as much as it was I was just like eh, there's some aspects of it whatever like it. I felt she was kind of a whiny character. I didn't really I didn't like the whole thing. Right. I didn't right. really like it too much. It wasn't. I watched the whole thing, but it was it was the only Marvel show at that point that felt like a slog. Right. Uh, Iron Fist being this the the ultimate slog. It was the only one that felt like a slog to watch. Like I didn't really enjoy any of the episodes. I was just like, all right, I'm watching for the payoff at the end of this. But I hope there's going to be a payoff. You know, that kind of thing is how I felt about it at that point. Right. Um, but my friend was like, you know what? I guarantee you, give it another watch, and you'll feel better. Now, did you about the whole thing? I did. I watched okay. it again, that gives and me I will a actually say, I will say this: I watched it again, and I went into it with a, with a fresh mind. I watched it again, um, and I will say this: like knowing where it ended up, knowing where it started, and then watching it again, and then knowing where, it, knowing how it ends, and knowing how it starts, I can appreciate it a lot more. And it's actually one of my favorite of the Marvel shows now at this point. Okay, well, I mean, that gives me a little bit of of hope for me rewatching it now. I guess. But 
Like, I know Clay... Clay really disliked the characters as a whole. Like, between her and uh, the character uh, Trish, uh, the the friend. Yeah. And, you know, his, his big gripe is, you know, she's a private eye, but yet both of them are fucking stupid ass, you know, well, this stupid. Is, they, that was one of my... That's one of the problems with the show, period. Um, Across the board, I agree with that. Is... The first few, like, two or three episodes, the first, like, three episodes, they build Jessica Joseph as really resourceful and smart. Right. And then the mid-season, she gets progressively dumber. Right. But they dumb her down for plot, and it's like, but, and then people who she took as credible sources in the first few episodes, she starts completely ignoring in the later part of the episodes, and it, so that was the biggest criticism. Like, that's absolutely true. That is a criticism of that show, in my opinion, that I don't particularly like. However, the show as a whole package, I think, is one of my favorite ones. I still like, I think, Daredevil Season 2 more. Yes, I, I like both Daredevil Seasons better than any of the Jessica Jones. In order for me right now, it goes Daredevil Season 2, Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones tied, and then Punisher, followed by... Um, oh, wow, really? You actually you put Jessica Jones ahead of Punisher, huh? Yeah, I do. Wow, well, all right. Keep going with your with your list. I'm sorry, then, yeah, I'm sorry, but in. And then uh, after we think, what is that? So I said Punisher. I said after Punisher, I would put Defenders. After Defenders, I would put uh, what you call it? Um, Luke Cage. No, no, no. Sorry, Luke Cage. Then Defenders. Then actually, no. Defenders. Luke Cage. And then um, Iron Fist. So you didn't. In, you didn't necessarily care too much for Luke Cage. I actually like Luke Cage a lot. Um, I just really dislike Iron Fist, but I actually also really like the Defenders. Like, I liked Iron Fist and the Defenders more. Gotcha. As a character, but, uh, so, put it this way, in terms of the bar, Luke Cage hit the bar for me, Iron Fist just fucking plummeted that bar to the utter depths of Hades. Right. So, that's how I felt about that. Like, Iron Fist had the worst villains in the history of it. Like, Luke Cage, that was Luke Cage's problem. That was the only problem I had with the show, was it had shitty villains. The villains were shitty. I felt it wasn't really that great um, on the villain aspect. Um, and honestly, I think all the shows, I judge off of the villains. Like, I think every good hero show needs a good villain. Otherwise, it's not a good show. And you look at the beginning parts of, like, I think Wilson Fisk is a great villain. Yep. No, I agree. Yeah, I think Wilson Fisk is a great villain, and he has some really cool. He has some really cool aspects about him that make it work for Daredevil. Uh, he's like the polar opposite of Daredevil. There was this quick, fast dude. He's just, just like I'm just going to tank your hits and hurt you because I'm strong, you know. And they play off each other really well. He's also sympathetic as a character, which is cool. It's hard to get a sympathetic bad guy like that, but I think that's really cool that they did it. Um, then you have. Uh, my next one, I said, uh, Jessica Jones. I think Kilgrave is probably the best of the Marvel villains. See, that's that's the only real thing. Like, I I like some of the other aspects of Jessica Jones, but Kilgrave really made the the show what it was for me. Like, he he made it enjoyable for me. I I really liked him as a villain. Yeah. No, I know. I I think he's the best villain. I think he is the best villain. In terms of the Marvel villain, I think he's the best villain that is there. Yeah, um, which is cool. And, uh, and so he, there's he that. He won't be making a prominent role. He won't be a. Pro I don't think he's a prominent role in season two, but it, it is confirmed that he will be showing back up in season two, in some fashion. Yep, so. which is cool. Super happy with that. Um, and then uh, three Punisher. I can't. Who the fuck was the Punisher villain? I'm so mad. I can't think right now. <gasps> Um, crap. That one's hard for me. I, yeah, I can't wasn't think of his it, name. That one's hard it, for me. Wasn't it like his best friend there? Like, the, yeah, I think it was. And then it was, like, yeah. And then I, honestly, like the Punisher villain or whatever, like some the Punisher villain stuff. wasn't. Well, I wasn't actually great as a villain, but honestly, the Punisher didn't need a good villain. Like, that's not what the Punisher's about. He's not about having one good villain. He just fucking fights crime, right? Like in general, he just fucking tears through people. He, you know, he's kind of his own villain, and trying to keep himself in check is his own villain. That's the Punisher. Yeah. Um. But you know, whatever. But I, I enjoyed that show because it was that show caught me by surprise. 
it was more cerebral than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. No, I agree. more cerebral and more um like slow paced than I thought it was going to be. Like I was expecting. I was expecting. Punisher, uh, like, I was expecting the jail cell scene from Daredevil. Yes. Just as a, an entire season of just that. Yes, type exactly. Of game. So. Yes, that's exactly correct. That's what I was expecting. Um, and it's like totally different. It was slower paced. It was really weird. I was like, at first it was weird. I didn't really appreciate. Like, I didn't. I didn't like it too much. And then like four or five episodes in, I was like, all right, I'm down. I'm in. I'm in on this. Right. Um, and then you get to defenders and all the other stuff. And, you know, yeah, you know, and their villains are fine. And I think Iron Iron Fist like had sh- the shittiest villain in the history of villains. Like his villains are just terrible, not good. Any of them. He had like twelve villains in that movie. You know, they were all shitty. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I mean, Iron Fist. I definitely think was the lowest on on the chain for me. I didn't necessarily think it was like absolute dog shit, but I did like. I don't know. He like. I keep seeing these cartoon drawings and like these memes and stuff about, oh, you want to know the plot of Iron uh, Iron Fist, and then it's just Danny Rand going around telling everybody he's Iron Fist. That's literally. I mean, it's not wrong though. <laughs> I know. Like he spent the entire thing like, oh, I'm Iron, F-, and then like, I, like somebody broke it down and like he he's a lunatic of a character. Like he, they portray him as having absolutely zero common sense. He comes back in a hobo, perceived dead. Like as as you you have com- you're not stupid you've been away training you under you should understand the basic concept of this story you're spinning is fucking insane right like you should understand this as a base concept and you should have patience with people not like well no this is my company I'm gonna come back in I'm gonna beat up these guards I'm going up here I'm doing this hey hey Ward hey guys how's it going hey right. you haven't seen me in a while but th- it's me like. Dude, you've been away, gone, presumed dead. You know every. You're not. You know you have. You've been living under a rock. Yes, true. But you, you, you don't lack common sense. Right. The story. The story you're telling people is fucking ludicrous and insane, and you need to provide some type of proof. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. And he just runs around like, oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm Iron Fist. I'm this. I'm the Divine Protector. But I'm also not because I left because I wanted to come back home. But I want. It's like it, it's dumb. It's just dumb. Like I didn't like it at all. I did not like Iron Fist, and he's he's one of my favorite characters in the comic books too. So like, it really depressed me. Um. Yeah, I actually. Uh, I know the only thing I really know about Iron Fist as a character, even from the comics, is I. I think I've read a couple like team up comics. With him, like I know, I read him and Luke Cage. Well, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, one of my right. favorite comic books. Yeah, I read a couple of the Iron Fist, Luke Cage. There was a couple Iron Fist and Wolverine ones that I've read. Um, yeah, I, I only know him as like a. I don't. I I guess necessary. I guess it's more or less like a sidekick character. Yeah, I always pictured him more of a sidekick character to Luke Cage. You know, so. But. I mean, as far as Jessica Jones goes, uh, apparently the critics are iffy on it. Like, they're about half and half. It's it's already getting lower reviews than what season one got. Um, the main thing saying that, uh, what is it, uh, Kristen Ritter does an outstanding job. Her performance is great. And I, like... I'll agree with that, with the exception of them writing and making her character dumber halfway through the season. I mean, she she plays that character very well. She does. Um, so the critics praised Ritter's performance, uh, but they I guess they felt that the season suffered from a few pacing issues and a lack of a compelling villain uh, after having you know David Tennant be Kilgrave from the first season, which. I mean, going from a from a villain like that, like you said, hands down, probably the best villain in the Marvel Netflix, you know, MCU type thing. Um, it's going to be hard to top that, you know. So it's it's almost like they're they're working backwards. So, but Jessica Jones comes out March eighth, uh, season two. Check it out. 
I don't think Clay will. Uh, do you have anything else to say about Jessica nope, Jones? No, I'm good. No, <laughs> you just moving on from Jessica Jones. I mean, I, not, I mean, I have nothing to say I about it. Hope, every... I do hope that, like, uh, like you said, you watched it the second time and you ended up really liking it. I hope that maybe by me watching it a second time, I have a little bit better of a of a thought process behind it. I guess. Yeah, like, I, mean, I didn't hate and it. This but... is the thing. When I rewatched the first season of Daredevil, I actually appreciated it less for what it was. Yeah. So there you go. Like when you if. You, so if you like Daredevil a lot, first season, don't rewatch the first season. That's all I'm saying. I've already watched the first season like three times. And I, I, I mean, I know every time I watch it, I I appreciate it less. I like it all the time, <laughs> but that's me. I mean, I like it all the time. I just appreciate it less. Like the more I watch it, it like gets lower on my list. The first season of Daredevil. Mm. <clears throat> all right, moving on. Devin. Yep. Next thing I wanted to talk to you about is something that I got a little excited about the other day. All right, uh, and like I don't add things on my to my Steam wish list very often, uh, mainly because if people see that I have a wish list, they might go and get it for me, and I don't necessarily like gifts. Uh, Who the hell buys you th- gifts on game gifts? I mean, Who are every, these friends? Every so often, like <laughs> all you guys. <laughs> You know, when I don't, it comes I don't around, know what you're talking about. I've, I've never bought you gifts. I just, okay, that's a lie. That's a lie. Um, I mainly put it on my wish list. To so be fair, you bought me back. things before too, so yeah. don't start. Oh no, that's the thing. I'm a hypocrite. So am I. Like I don't like gifts to, either. All right. Well, still eat it. You know what? From now on, from it. now on, we're going. To, no, from now on, we're just going to agree. Like, all right, Webby, I want you to have this game. I want you to have this game. All right, I'll buy it. it, it it'll be for me. So the game I want you to buy, you just buy it, and I'll buy the game you want me to buy, and then we don't have to give each other gifts, we don't have to feel shitty. All right. Because we're just right. buying it ourselves. Uh, in any case, this game happens to be Chrono Trigger, which I was a huge fan of Chrono Trigger. Uh, I played it back on the SNES. Snish. Or, for the people who don't know what an SNES is, you know, all you youngsters out there, uh, it would be a Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Or SNES. A SNES. Um, For those in the Nizzo. Now, I know that Chrono Trigger has been readapted and ported to other systems. Like, uh, I think it was released on the Nintendo DS. Uh, it was released on a PlayStation at one time as, like, a Chronicles-type thing. I might even still have that one. Um, and, like I said, it just recently got released on Steam. So, you know, there you go for your PC games. Um, so, Chrono Trigger, it was, it's been a long time since I've played this game, uh, so I don't remember too, too much about it, I remember some of the characters, um, so I'm gonna read you a little bit from the Wikipedia, at least this one little bit, so it's a role-playing game, it's a Final Fantasy-esque type game, alright, now, the reason I say Final Fantasy-esque is, dude, Okay, so Squaresoft put together what was called the Dream Team to put this game together. Okay, they Square had... Squaresoft or Square Enix? Uh, I think it was originally Squaresoft back when it was Nintendo. I'm just going to say Square. How's that? It it's was one or the other. Where uh, I looked at Chrono Crusade, not Chrono Trigger. My bad. I think it was Square Enix for the end. Uh, actually, no, it was DS Square. It was Square. Mobile. The company is Square. Yeah. So the Dream no. Team here we have Hironobu, which is the creator of the Final Fantasy series. Okay, so already coming out of the gate strong. They had Yuji Hori, uh, who was a freelance designer and a creator on Dragon Quest, the Dragon Quest series, which is another fun series. Um, and then Akira, I'm going to butcher this last name. Holy crap. Akira, uh, oh, I got this. Toriyama. Um, Ooh, yes, actually, you're good? perfect. You yes. did exactly right. Yes. Uh, and this guy, dude, this guy's a manga artist. 
Um, uh, he and he fan. did the manga. He did Dragon Quest and Dragon Ball. Yeah, he is the creator of Dragon. Well, okay. So first, his first highly successful mainstream manga was Doctor Slump. Fuck. Doctor Slump. Doctor Slump served as the prequel to Dragon Ball in a sense. It was like the spiritual prequel to Dragon Ball. Um, it it starred an android girl named uh, Ariel. I think her name was. Okay. And she she did like st- stupid crazy stuff. Like she could like crack the earth in half and stuff. Like she, she was crazy. Fun girl, fun girl though. So that kind of the spiritual successor to that kind of became Dragon Ball, and then Dragon Ball eventually became Dragon Ball Z. And you know the kind of impact Dragon Ball Z had. You could run around and say Kamehameha in a crowded room, and somebody's gonna respond to you at this point in time. Right. And dude, uh, Chrono, who's the main—it's the second best-selling manga of all time. There we go. The go main, on. the main character in Chrono Trigger, dude, his hair. You stand him next to like a Saiyan or whatever the Super Saiyan he, guys. He fits right in. He fits, yeah, he fits right in. It's great. Um, yep. so Chrono Trigger as a game, uh, did so well that according to Nintendo Power Magazine, it is described as one of the best video games of all time. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Um, it had apparently it had multiple endings, which I don't remember. I think I've only played through it once, and I got the same ending twice. I guess apparently, um, plot related side quests that focus more on the character development, so you can learn a little bit more about each of the characters if you do all the side quests. Um, it had detailed graphics, and apparently it was the third best selling game of 1995. Now that's going back a few years. Um, but it shipped over 2 million copies. Uh, the DS version, when it was ported to the Nintendo DS, did over 790,000 copies. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great game. (laughs) That's all I can really tell you. Um, the whole plot of the game, from what I remember, it, this is where it's like nosebleeds are going to start happening, okay? Uh, for it's, all you people who listen to it's, Fate. It's a time game. So you it know, is. You know, In fact, seeing the gods you, know what? you know what? <laughs> Go watch Legends of Tomorrow. It's probably similar to this. Um, so these three people, uh, I believe it starts off with Chrono, uh, Marley, and Luca. I don't remember if those are them. Uh, Chrono is the main antagonist, the main the main character. I believe Marley is like a, a princess in disguise, like she's the princess of some some city or some civilization that she just pretends not to be. Uh, and then Luca is like this tinkerer, you know, as you do. Yeah, as you do when you're royalty, you just pretend not to be. Um, I mean, it's a really common trope in Japanese anime and games. It really is. Yeah. Like, I'm the princess, but I don't really want to be the princess anymore, so I'm not the princess. I'm just some random traveler girl. Don't mind me. Right. Um, so, Luca, who's like this tinkerer person, uh, and her and her father, they, start dem- they want to demonstrate this teleporter thing at some fair, and... They get Marley to volunteer, and then she just disappears. She goes through, like, this portal. Uh, So, I believe that's... I kind of think that's where the game starts, and then Chrono and Luca go in, and they end up, like, back in time or something. But because... Something along like the timeline thinks that this the Marley is this other princess of the same city or the same civilization who went missing, but then now that she's back, they think that's her. It, it, it okay, it triggers what is known as the grandfather paradox, which is the whole thing that you're they're trying to fix. <laughs> that's all I really know. You get a frog as a playable character, okay. <laughs> And a robot. <laughs> that's that's really all I know. Um, I could go more in depth with the story. Like I am reading about the story right now, but it is just time travel, nosebleed worthy nonsense. So 
but yeah, it's really good. I, I do remember that uh, every time you want to go, you get a spaceship, and every time you want to go back to a certain time, you have to go to, uh, oh, what is it? They call it like the end time or something like that, uh, or, or infinity time. I don't remember what it's called now, but you go to this place that's pretty much at the end of the timeline, just like in Legends of Tomorrow, how the, the essentially the time cops had their place at the end of time. So, it's good. It's a good game. I really like it. I'm really happy that they brought it out on uh, Steam. And I'm hoping to get it at some point. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely will pick it up. 100%. I love JPGs, so I mean, I would definitely pick it up. Like, I think one of our favorite games, Webby, is Final Fantasy Tactics. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's in my PlayStation right now. I've been wanting to play it. But I, every time I go over there, I end up just putting friends on. <laughs> I'm almost All done right. the series, man. All right, I just I just want to finish it. What friends? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I binge watched Friends. Uh, I know. Yeah, I'm I know. halfway through season ten. Isn't it the last season? Yes. There you go. Just finish it up, man. Um, so thank you. Start watching. Go back to watching all that anime I gave you and everything else. And yeah. Yeah, it says, uh, in fact, on the wiki here for Chrono Trigger, real real quick, it says Square Enix released Chrono Trigger without without any type of announcement for Microsoft Windows via through Steam on February 27th, 2018. That wasn't too long ago. Just a couple days ago. Uh, yep. This version includes all the content from the Nintendo DS port, uh, improved graphics from the mobile device release, support for mouse and keyboard controls, and the autosave features, along with additional content such as wallpapers and music. Yay! You know, you gotta love those wallpapers. You can't just go and Google image search Chrono Trigger, which is what I do. But, but yeah. Man, I'm looking forward to playing that. I just I remember I loved the frog dude. I think I think he was like a knight or a squire, if I remember correctly. Um, and then the robot. I remember Luca fixes the robot. Yes, and then the correct, robot sir. ends up joining your party because he feels indebted to the party. <laughs> it's like, oh, you turned me back on. I might as well just follow you now. Help you out. Yeah. Like, you so, fixed me. You, know, um, you brought I, me the oil can, so to speak, Dorothy. And then I don't remember too much about this character. I, there was a character, his name's Magus, or Magus. Uh, he does join your party, and I remember there was a conflict between him and the frog. Uh, where I think he kills the he killed the frog's family or, or something like that. But okay. yet they both join your party. <laughs> like the frog just puts his differences aside. It's like, okay, well, sure. But yeah. All in all, I think there's six playable characters that you can get. You know another game right. that I heard that I can get on my 3DS? My buddy Ross was telling me about it. Fucking Earthbound. I loved that game. What game? Earthbound? Earthbound, Earthbound. Not ringing any bells for me, oh, sorry, dude, dude. You get a dog, you eat cheeseburgers to fucking gain health. It's great. You have to sounds look cool. it up. You're gonna have to look it up. It was really good. Um, I mean it sounds sounds good. Any game where I can eat cheeseburgers, I'm down. Oh yeah. One of my favorite games of all time. Not cheeseburger related, but root beer tapper. I love root beer tapper. Taps root beer. Isn't that an old, old oh. ass game? It is an old, old ass game. You were correct. Yeah. Okay. I think I had it. <laughs> um. Very old ass game. Let me Love see. me some root beer tappers. Uh. Now, specifically, more so because I got you on this call. We got a little bit more to. Wow, dude. We've covered part of Jessica Jones. <laughs> And Chrono Trigger. We've We're at 26 talk- minutes. We've only been talking for a half hour. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about something else. <laughs> All right. A couple more things. Something I mentioned to you last night. Just whatever you want to ask me, Webby. I'll answer. I'll be candid. This is a Mo- candid interview. Motherfuckers 
bearing a statue of Jason Voorhees in a Minnesota. Oh God, lake. that that's so <laughs> terrible. That's so terrible. Dude, imagine if you you're were going just, to like, kill somebody and you're just swimming around. Dude, in this you're going lake. to fucking kill somebody. Yeah. Like I'm not even kidding when I say that. <laughs> what the fuck is gonna die? Ah, uh, dude, I would I would have a heart attack under the water for sure. Heck yeah, dude. I do think that it should be animatronic and put on some form of a timer where just like every Dude, X it, amount of minutes it just like so many levels. Ten. Yeah. So I wanted to mention that. Uh I don't necessarily have the, the news story directly in front of me. I don't necessarily know that there's much more to the story than that. But uh anybody it's listening, feel free to go Google image search uh Jason Voorhees statue in I Oh no, just type in Jason Voorhees just Google Jason Voorhees uh statue and then like yeah. it'll pop up. Like it's and, it's fucked up. It's yeah, fucked up, people. They chained one they chained the statue down uh into a Minnesota lake. So good on ya, man. It's fucked up. People have a really sick sense of humor. Yes they do. Um the other thing that I wanted to mention to you specifically was I was reading an article and right about now, hold up, we're going to pause here for a moment, right about now, I'm going to give a shout out to my bro Nestor, all right? I talked Nestor! To, I, I talked to you yesterday, uh, we had a good heart to heart talk, I appreciate everything you said, uh, with that being said... We're going to talk about some Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Just for you, Nestor. Um, I feel like we haven't done that in a while, though. Yeah. Well, this, I was reading an article, right? It caught my eye. Apparently, Dungeons and Dragons reveals epic crossover with Magic the Gathering. Oh, God. Yep. I'm um, not ready for this. <laughs> Well, essentially all it is, is uh, according to, I think it was the Digital Dragon Magazine, or Dragon Plus Magazine, um, they are in the works of creating campaign books and stuff for D&D &D players to quote-unquote plane shift, right, and okay. visit the various different planes from Magic the Gathering. Uh, the first one that they mentioned was Ixalan, which I don't know too, too much about. The picture shows a giant-ass fucking T-Rex covered in, like, plants. So, oh, I think that's the forest realm, isn't it? That's like the forest realm, I maybe. think. Maybe. Um, but I think that's the first one that they're working on. I'm not sure if they're going to be doing other ones. Um, but... I know you're you and I are both a fan of Magic the Gathering as well as D and D, and I think it'd be really cool if they actually statted out some of these things from Magic the Gathering and put them to official D and D, you know, Wiz Wizards of the Coast stats. Yeah, it'd be nice. Um, not like we don't have enough fucking different planes of existence in D and D already, but hey. Some of these places, you know, man, I are, I already foresee a planeswalker class coming or something, right? Um, like a or, or like a uh, an add on because they're not really adding new classes; they're more so just making like bins to other classes, right? So I see like planner wizard coming or like a planner sorcerer. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, it's not a bad idea because no, not at all. like uh, a lot of these different planes of existence in 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 magic. You get you already have tons of artwork and lore already pre built behind it. You know, the the lore is right in the game. They do have stories and books and stuff on all these things. So and then you can take some of the more well known essentially the well known people in magic and turn those into NPCs. True. So not to mention, dude, I wanna see a statted out fucking plant T Rex. Like, I saw the picture of this on the article, and I was just like, I love this T-Rex. Let me see. I mean, I feel I, like you could, just, sure. you could just stat out a plant as T-Rex. Listen. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I feel like you could. It's not the same. It, it, it kind of is the same. It, in the same end result. Damn it. Webby. It's not the same. It's the same. Totally the same. No. I mean, it might be. 
Yeah, I guess you could really just stat out anything you wanted yourself. I don't think it'd be hard, but yeah, you know. Um, just saying, just you know, ideas. Remember, was all psyched about like I was gonna be yeah, on his I side. Mean, like, you, yeah, you, me, you shot me down. It's cool. I get it. I mean, I still love you. I mean, yeah, I know. Still, <laughs> fucking... I still love you. I mean, you know, that, it, it means is, something, right? It is what it is, I suppose. I mean, I still love you, Webby. Now I can't even find the picture of this fucking plant. Oh, there it is. It wasn't meant to be. Hey, I mean, it's not really even a plant. I don't know. Maybe it's just I saw so much green. It's not even a plant T-Rex. It's like a feathered T-Rex. It's like a mix between a T-Rex and an a AB, raptor. It's an avian T-Rex? Yeah, it's fucked up. I'm going to post it in the... Uh, let's see. I'll do it in the Simply Unprofessional chat. All right. For you to it. see. Paste. Cool. See, it's got like feathers on its little ass arms. Let me look at it and see. Let me get in there and look at it. Uh, issue chat. Little feathers on its arms. Impress me, little feather and arm dude. Oh my god, I found your next character. If we, oh, that's cool. If we do a D and D Magic the Gathering crossover type of game, or just not, this is your next character. It's either yours or mine. Man, we could be a raccoon that smuggles squirrels. <laughs> No, fuck that. I wouldn't do that. You know why? Why? Remember what happened, remember what happened when I first made Roy? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sabrina's character fucking attacked me with squirrels and Colin allowed the bullshit to happen? Yeah, yeah. fuck that. No, nope, fuck that. Yeah, noise. but look at that picture. That's a t- it's a good picture. A it looks like Rocket picture. Raccoon smuggling porgs. Yeah. Which now I want more than anything. So. Can you imagine Rocket Raccoon smuggling porgs? <laughs> Oh, man. I'm crossing the universe here, but I don't give a fuck. Actually, I'm not. They're both Marvel. Holy shit. Or they're both Disney. Both, yeah. So. Well, yeah. And then if we had a T-Rex mate with a gelatinous cube, you'd get something similar to that, Suppose, I guess, maybe. Or no. I mean, just have a, be a, like, a really boss-ass gelatinous cube and anything it anything it eats, it assimilates into itself. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form. So, like, if it eats your mage, it gains magic powers. If it eats your 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 you know your warrior, it gains fucking. If it eats your barbarian, it gains it, it gains rage. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Oh, see, plot twist. <laughs> well, it looks like you guys are going to be fighting a gelatinous cube soon. I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's fine. You could also do that with a regular, like, dark priest priest or priestess, where they fucking, like, dropping a dark orb bubble uh, requires a will save. Uh, while you're in the bubble, they can assimilate your powers and steal your powers. And utilize them in some way, shape, or form. So you have a mage that has fucking, like, rage, which would be dope. Like well, a bear, bear totem rage <laughs> on a mage, so they can have fucking damage resistance to everything. That would be nice. That would be nice. Now, let me ask you this. Yes. Based off of say D and D rules, or, or this is why they don't let me. This is why they don't let me DM people because I would probably kill somebody. Yeah, I mean you're gonna you'd kill all of us. <laughs> like I would. That's why, they don't, that's why they don't let me DM D and D. Um, their, their reasons here. Now, as far as D and D, right? Yes, if sir. if yep. you if we wanted to say insert or homebrew some Magic the Gathering rule sets, okay? This is completely hypothetical. If we wanted to homebrew some of the Magic the Gathering rule sets or or powers into D and D, okay. As a for instance, how would you handle, say, Trample, the Magic the Gathering power Trample? Trample. Um. Even if it even if it misses the AC, I would give it like Trample of one, two, three, up to five or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, if they trample, if basically if they miss your AC by within that amount, um, they still roll the damage and they roll or they roll like half their damage and it does half damage of half. So if their damage is like two d six plus ten, they roll one d six plus five and it, that damage is done half to you. Or if you wanted to be a mean ass, they, they just roll damages regularly and it, you just take half. All right. And yeah. this is why again they don't let me DM. 
Hey, <laughs> these, are, these are great ideas. I'm making notes. I know, I know. I mean, I mean, look, I'm I'm more of a they philosophical. Might, they might not let you DM, but you can DM vicariously through me. Yes, I mean, I'm more of a. In terms of philosophical, in terms of DM, I am more of a philosophical individual. Like, so if you give me you give me an idea like he just did, I'll be able to come up with a workable game solution for it. Which, I mean, there are situations where I I I, I hate myself for coming up with these game solutions for it. Um, but you know. Whatevs. But yeah, I mean that's pretty much effectively me. Like that's what I, that, that's my specialty. You give me game, I will work with it. You got another one for me? I'm trying to think of some of the other D and D or some of the other Magic: The Gathering powers that would work in that style. Like, I mean, you have things like flight, but then you just have flying creatures. That's fine. Um, I mean, I could go really far back and say like Rampage, but I don't necessarily. I don't even remember what Rampage did. That's like, well, like haste. You, if you get well, haste is a spell in D and D already. But if you right. wanted to give somebody a, a natural like haste ability, um, it would be something along the lines of they get a free attack. If you, again, if you wanted to be a real asshole, you could be a free attack at the top of every round, but it had to be like a physical attack, or give them like a free bonus action at the top of every round, which would be terribly broken or you can give them a um the way i would do it would be at the start of the combat they get a free and i'll put it on cooldown so like haste two or whatever or haste three or whatever and that's the cooldown right time run it or like haste you know you or you can roll a d6 for it and basically at the when that exhausts they get a free turn on that turn so, like, they start off, their haste ability kicks in, they get a free action at the beginning of the turn, and then you roll a d6, and you're like, okay, two. So two turns later, they get another free turn, you roll it again, and then six. So six turns later, you know what I mean? Right. That, that's why I would do haste, or something like haste specifically. Like, if you want to do haste as a inbred ability. Okay. Now, what about... I, I actually pulled up a list of the Magic the Gathering ones now, so... Uh, hex proof. That one seems pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. In fact, technically, uh, Rakshasas and and some similar beings are technically hex proof up to By a certain point. power level. <clears throat> like I think uh, they are immune to all spells and effects that are below sixth level or something like that. Um. What about? Uh, here's an easy one for you. Lifelink. Oh, Lifelink? Yeah, that'd just be like, um, what's that Warlock Blood Blade power at second level, but make it on a, like a, make it a, I would make it a, either, again, like in Magic, like a level, or make it like a dice roll equ equivalent. Mm -hmm. So, basically, because I think if you give them like a flat, like, oh, you get half of your damage back in life, that would be fucked up. Right, but uh, life well, I know a lot I, of creatures. Instead of making it temp HP, I would just say, okay, like life link five. If you hit an enemy, every time you hit an enemy once, I would do once per round, make it not broken, so you get like, you know, like a fighter with like eight attacks. But um, if you hit an enemy once per round, you can regain, uh, or once per standard action. Do that once per standard action, so he can gain. He can do it twice if he uses his action surge. Once per standard action, you can regain that much health. So, like, lifelink 5, once well, per standard action, when you hit, you get that much health. I know that there are some creatures in, like, the, the monster manual that they have abilities like, uh, you know, it does X amount of, you know, holy damage and then gain half the amount back. That was done. You know what I right, mean? but I mean, I'm I, I'm looking at this more of like an inbred passive that would be kind of powerful on a, on a right. PC right. as an inbred passive. You would, um, you would have a hard time killing anybody. Reach would already be uh, that's already described on weapons. That's already in the game very easily. Uh, we've already talked about trample. What about? Well, I guess banding is also kind of technically in there. That that comes in more when you have uh, monsters that attack in packs. So like goblins have something similar, like a pack tactics kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, they they had that in four. They kind of took it out. You know, the combat advantage. They took it out. Right. 
So I mean, you know, but yeah, I, I would I basically it would just be combat advantage. I would just give combat advantage back to the game. Um, what about first strike? How would you deal with? How would you? How would you rules that in D and D? First strike. Um, yeah. I would do. Uh, first strike would be a if an enemy attacked you, bonus action, you can attack them first, and uh, you can drop a bonus action, you can attack them before they attack you, so if you kill them before they hit you, they don't hit you. Okay. Now, what if you are the person with first strike, would you say that uh, if you are attacking someone, they are incapable of taking a reaction to, say, attack back? Um, no, because I mean, even in the game, that's not how that first strike would work. All I right. mean, first strike is you know, if it's in your regular turn, I would say first strike because first strike, if anything else, is more defensive than offensive, right? Even though it's designed as an offensive ability, it's more defensive than offensive. It's meant to like, oh, I'm going to attack this guy before he attacks me, um, and try to kill him before he attacks me, so it lets me kind of do some stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I would uh, that's what I would do over over that, yeah. All right, uh, here's one. If you don't know what it does in Magic, I pulled up the definition for it just in case. Uh, Bushido. What does Bushido do? Uh, is a triggered keyword ability that makes creatures bigger if they block or are blocked. It appears in the Kamigawa block uh, as an as- ability associated with the samurai creature type. And the ability has only appeared in samurai creature cards with the exception of greater morphing from the tournament prohibited. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you essentially get Boshido X, like one, two, or three. Uh, and if, like, if you were a Bushido one and you blocked, uh, you get a plus one, plus one. Or if somebody blocks you, you get a plus one, plus one. So you become more powerful as well. So how that would work would be is uh, like if you basically if you block or attack or if you are blocked or if you if you block or if you are blocked you get an advantage. Is that what I'm understanding from the rule? Um, kind if of. If you if, like if you block a creature or if a creature blocks your attack, you get a bu- you get a buff. Yes. Um, Bushido, how how would that roll with that on D and D? That's a weird one. Um, but. Um, uh, I would actually for that I would probably depending on what it. your depending on what your bushido is. So say if you had a bushido two, right? Right. Uh, and somebody attacked you. Uh, See, I, okay. Your so in the, in would, your, sense, your bushido would kick in, and you'd have plus two to your AC for that in, attack. In D and D sense, I would do it like this. Yes, I would do. I would do four types of bushido, and they would. I would attach them to your saves. So specifically speaking, if you try to, if you, uh, if somebody's an attack on you and the defense is this and you have Bushido 1, in that niche situation, like, you know, if you, like, if you're hit by an area spell or something like that, um, and a deck save, you get a plus 1 in that situation, but your natural deck save isn't that high. Um, something like that. Or if AC situation, you have, like, Bushido 2 for AC, uh, and I would I would make it burn a bonus action, or I would just do a plus two across the board and just make it burn a bonus action, where you have to drop a bonus action for it instead of it's not always active. You have to give something for something. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, that, that's better. I would just do it like that. I would probably say Bushido one through three, um, and then basically you drop a bonus action for it to activate it. Uh, you know, if you have Bushido one or Bushido whatever, you drop a bonus action, boom, and you're you're good to go. You know, uh, you know, I want to live. I want a bonus action. All right, cool. Yeah, that's what I would do. Okay. Mm. That's the most exciting answer I know, but I mean, that's what I do. Well, this one's going to be hard for you. Was maybe, that maybe uh, bloodthirst? What's that? So it's a keyword ability. Uh, okay. It. Oh, let's see. It works by putting a number of plus one plus one counters on a permanent. 
uh, as it enters the battlefield if an opponent has been dealt damage that turn? Nope, that's easy for me. Um, I would slightly change the word on it, but I would basically make it if you attack the same opponent. Uh, every round you attack them, you get a plus one. Um, that's how I would do it. So, like, even like playing into the wordplay of of Bloodthirst, that's how I would do it. So it's like you know, so up to a certain point, like say, you yeah, have like Bloodthirst, Bloodthirst four, like the most you can get is a plus four, but you okay. gain every time you attack them or something like, or however, like if you, however you want to go, you're gonna go one through three. Because actually, you know, one through three, because all the magical bonuses in the game are one are one through three. So I would go Bloodthirst one through three, and basically every subsequent round or every subsequent attack, even to make it really like brutal. Um, you get an additional plus to hit. I Not picture, damage, I picture hit. this being a barbarian, a barbarian like a dream? trait. Yeah, a barbarian trait, or even like a fighter trait, Maybe or something like fighter, that. More, yeah. yeah, more like especially the new brute fighter. But yeah, no, no, absolutely, hundred percent. That's why I, I, that's why I'd roll with it right there. Okay, so every subsequent attack against the same target gives you a, yes. a, a cumulative plus one. Yes, uh, up to a maximum of three. Yes. Uh, I would say and just if you, on. If you switched uh, targets, that would restart. It would. If you switch targets, it would restart. Yeah. Or do you think it should be something that isn't always a passive, but it's more of like a you proc this ability because you know you're going against the boss, so that way. You no, I think there's. Too, targets, I think there's too much stuff in the game for that. Yeah. Uh, I think there's too much stuff like that already in the All game right. that would be kind of like for that. I think this is a cool ability in the fact that it gives you some motivation to like single target DPS. So like you put in your barbarian who's like your single target DPS guy, uh, it gives him some incentive to like I'm going to keep gnashing at this boss until he's dead because I can I, I can hit him easier and I do more damage. All right. So yeah, that's what I would do. Let's see. What other ones do I have for you? Bring it on. There are a lot of abilities in Magic the Gathering now. God damn. I know, right? I remember back in the old days, it wasn't anything like that. It was much more simple. It was a simpler time. Back in my day! I say that being younger than you. Back in my day! Uh, okay, here's a different one, I guess. It's called Haunt. All right. Uh, Haunt works by allowing a permanence come into play ability uh, or a spell to go off twice. More precisely, it allows a card to be removed from a graveyard, haunting another permanent. So essentially, you play the card, it goes to your graveyard, and then you play it, you remove it from your graveyard for the haunt cost, and it does something else. Hmm. Um, see, that would be great on uh, in 4E for powers. Mm. You can, you know, you can drop a daily and then, or like, drop like a... You know what? I would actually say uh, I would put that on a class that's meant to debuff. I put that on a wizard. On a control or a debuff situation mm -hmm. where it's an ability they can proc to, like, raise their spell level. Like, okay, I'm going to cast this instead of a first or second level spell, I'm going to cast it as a third or fourth level spell. And, uh, basically they can go back and, let's say it's a single target debuff, right? They can go back and cast, I'm going to cast this three levels higher, I'm going to cast this second level spell as a fifth level spell, and I'm going to make it affect three other people, uh, long, you know what I mean? See, I was thinking kind of like, also, like, I was thinking differently, like, give yourself, you know, uh, another numerical score, so haunt, you know, one through, say, four, right? Okay. This, would, this would be mainly for a spell casting class. And I agree. If you drop to zero hit points, it gives you the ability to get back a spell slot of whatever haunt level you have and to cast that spell instantly in the moment that you drop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, that works. I can see it being abused, though, for certain spells, especially, like, on a cleric with, like, a heal spell. Because, like, the second you drop, you're healed back. Like, I would literally right, well, use I, it on I, the heal I, I spell. Think, I think I would give it more so specifically for just sorcerers, wizards, maybe even a warlock. Actually, I think a warlock would be the most thematic, because they get a low number of spells to begin with. Right. 
So yeah, actually, so, that's uh, what I would. I think I, would I think it would have warlock. to. I think it would have to. Yeah, maybe just a warlock specific. Yeah, ability. I would give it to a warlock all day. Actually, yeah, I actually really like that on a warlock. Yeah, right. I know. I really like that on a warlock. That that would be, oh, that'd be beautiful. On a warlock, that'd be oh, that'd be that'd be perfect. <clears throat> Let's see. There's Devin's awesome. Chinese buffet music in the background. Love Chinese it. buffet music. All right. Hey man, every time I go to the Chinese buffet, that we're playing some weird music like that. Um, All right then. Uh, okay, this one might be kind of easy for you. Eh, depending. We'll see. What about gra see goes. graft? So essentially, a graft creature is when it when it comes into play, it has X amount of plus one plus one counters on it. Okay. And it can move those plus one plus one counters to other creatures on the board. Yeah, uh, I, I would be like kind of like the, the Bardic Inspiration pool. Like I would literally just give you like a pool or like the Cleric's pool, like based on your level, and you can drop up to you know your level half of your level in one go, and kind of feed that to a, a dude for an attack for a bonus or a save. You know, so you have like these floating plus ones out there. Mm -hmm. It has to be before uh, before calculations and everything. But you can, like, kind of uh, inspire or, like, buff a dude in the back. Like, and I would give this to, like, a form of, form of a cleric um, who can, like, sit back and be like, all right, kind of carry these passive buffs. Like, all right, cool, I'm going to, well, you know, we're, we're about, you know, you're about to attack this dude. I'm going to spend my turn or bonus action on my turn buffing you for three extra, uh, three extra. So you get plus three on your next attack roll or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it lasts until, you know, the it, it's only on the attack roll. I would make it only on an attack roll, or you have to state, like, you know, it, it's one of three things, like, on a save, on an attack, or whatever. Um, but I, I wouldn't even do a save. I would literally just do attack. Uh, attack, or you can do, like, I would say attack or AC, but before it's, you know, when he declares he's attacking you, you if you have a bonus action left, you can drop it and do it. That's how I would do it. On that note. Okay. Oh, let's see. Oh, this is an interesting one. What about Wither? What's Wither do again? Remind me, please. Uh, so, whenever damage is dealt to a creature by a source with Wither, uh -huh. it's not done in damage. It's instead done in uh, minus one, minus one counters. Um, I was gonna. Uh, I would say you can permanently lower mm. the AC of something you're attacking. Yeah, I would do that. You know, or if it's gonna be attached to a spell, whatever, whatever attribute you hit, you can permanently lower. Or I would even do like a counter on it, so it's not because that's kind of broken to straight attribute damage. Right. Uh, I would say maybe like you know wither one, two, or three. So if you have wither one for one round, that's how it is. Wither two for one round, and wither three, it's for three rounds. You know, you know that's how I'd rule it. So you can have like you have wither, and it still works, but you have to be more. Uh, you know, you you attack. I can't think of the word right now, but yeah, you attack, and it's like all right, cool. You know, we're attacking, we're doing this, da da da, da whatever, and it's all right. So I hit you, you now are easier to hit AC-wise for the next two rounds or three rounds. Okay. That's how I'd roll it, personally. Here's an interesting one. And it would... I, it's situational, and you'd really have to be in a party that works well together, I think. Okay. Uh, exalted. Uh, whenever a creature you control attacks alone... That creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn for each creature with Exalted. I o the only situation I see that being overly useful is a situation of rogues. <laughs> like, they're all just gonna, like, alright, we're all gonna just, like, rogue assassins who just jump out and, like, alright, 
we're all going to kill each other. Honestly, well, no, I see thing. that. It, it only mm. works if you attack, if one tar- if one person attacks. So if, like, if, if your entire party was exalted, you would essentially have to choose who's making the attack. Yeah, I don't turn. know. I, I don't think that one, I don't think that would transfer too well. No. Just, uh, no, because I just don't see a point for it. Like, yeah, you get one dude who can do a plus five, plus five now, but the question, like, like a plus five attack, plus five uh, damage, but you can all, if, and you're all giving up an attack. You know, you're all giving, basically, like, I'm, I do nothing. And I feel like you're more, you can do more damage as a team just all attacking. Right. Than just that plus five, plus five. Now, if you, if it was just like, you just, you guys could never attack the same person, that would be a different story. Right. That would be that would be that would be a game changer. Everybody in the party would take that as like do not gank. Just 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 stay away from me and let me do my thing. That would be a different story altogether. That would be broken at that point, actually, almost. Um Uh then there's the essentially the opposite of Exalted. Uh-huh. Uh something called Battle Cry. Now, Battlecry, instead of giving a plus one, plus one, Battlecry gives a plus one, plus zero bonus to each other attacking creature. So, uh, I so see, I see, this, that will be a I see, plus one I see this being like a barbarian type of a thing where you Battlecry and it essentially for every other attacking person on your team, they everybody else gets a plus one, plus one, or a plus one, plus zero. Essentially, or just a plus to an attack, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, yeah, for sure, I could see that being, being a thing. Now, going back to the exalted thing, I wasn't even thinking about this because we're thinking, you know, plus one, plus ones. Um, another, like I said, it was situational, but like if the boss happens to have, say, the boss is engaged with one particular party member, and they might be about to die and you guys all sacrifice your turns, that plus is also going to get transferred to his defense, so his AC is going to shoot up. Right, but again, I feel like if you have the time that your cleric could just heal, like, you shouldn't be in that situation. You know what I mean? I feel like there's other things that go into that situation, but I feel like that you shouldn't be in that situation. I feel like it would be so situational, it wouldn't get used, put it that way. Right. Like, it is a situational build, a very situational build, but I feel like it's too situational to be overly useful. Yeah. Is the thing is it, that's my only defense for uh, against it really. It's like I feel like oh, while wow, cool, I think it's too situational to really get use. Um, getting to the end of this list, I'm not going through all of these. Obviously, there are a lot of them. Some of them just just flat out won't work. Um, I'm just more so choosing the ones that I think sound kind of cool. Yeah, like, you know, like I said, some of those flat out won't fucking work. Like, it's just the way the cookie crumbles. Um, what is the word on this one? Uh, how would you go about doing, say, well, I don't know if this one translates, but we'll see. Uh, menace. Um, menace is essentially it makes a creature unblockable by a single creature. Uh, I would say make it, um, make it, uh, that will be a good, like, ranger ability or like a, a alternative to like a ranger's, like a hunter's mark or give it like a fighter or something like that. But I'd make it an alternative. I would actually give it to, you know what, because you know what needs it. I think I would give it to the arcane fighter dude, the, Spellfighter guy as an alternate ability where he can give up a spell slot and tag a creature and he gets up to fourth level spells for, for that many rounds or for the spell slot he gives up that creature gets a minus to to its defenses against him that one creature okay. so kind of like the hex spell so I would basically be like oh he instead of using a spell he can burn a fourth level slot and this creature gets a minus four minus four to all, or minus four to all defenses right. against him only you know what I mean I, th- I think that would be pretty cool um, it's a split card thing. Uh, and that one won't work because that involves way too much rules. 
Which one? I'm uh, afraid to ask at this point. Ascend. Uh, yeah, no. No, no. I'm good on that. I'm real good on that one, trust me. If I remember what that spell is, I'm real good on that. I'm trying to ask you, like, how does flying work? <laughs> no, I already figured there's already flying characters. There's, like, flying creatures. Right, but there's no, like, real, like, rules against, like, defending against a flying character. I mean, so I, I was just saying, I, I was curious, like, you didn't be like, hey, I, it's flying. I'm like, oh, I have right. no idea how that would work out. It'd be weird. Um, that one wouldn't work because it's all about exiling <laughs> libraries. So that's fine. Um, Ooh, actually, that could work, though. That would be a boss. That would be like a magical boss dude ability. Basically, any spell cast already, any spell already used, he can use it, and you can't use that spell for the remainder of the fight. Oh, that's tough. That, that would be fucking game breaking. That would be a hard fight, though. Oh man, like cleric, like he make him, he makes him do like all his healing spells, or, like one of his best healing spells, and it's like, nope, can't use it. Or like even more worse, the lower level healing spells, which are like the bread and butter. So you're forced to use like your higher level healing spells, but you know, so now you you have to save those to heal because you can't heal and you can't do damage to high level spells. That would be fucked up. That'd be a fucked up ability, and I like it. But that'd be fucked up. Again, this is why they don't let me DM. I I fucking murder somebody. Um. <laughs> They'd be like, "What? No, you, that's not fair." I'm like, "Of course it's fair. You mean that fair? It's fair. Fair is fair is fair. Right." No? Okay. No. Haters? Haters? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just hate me. I, I just hate me because you ain't me. Okay, what about phasing? That's a tough Ooh. one. No, it's, uh, is phasing the one like where you can't get hit by certain things? Well, essentially what it is is every other turn you're just you don't exist. Like, what I would do is for phasing, what I would do for this is I would do phasing one through three, and basically for physical attacks only. So magic still affects you, but physical attacks only if your AC is hit, but it's if they hit your AC or you know, whatever, you basically basically you roll and if you know you roll your will defense. You know, so every attack against an AC you can roll your will defense, and if you get within you know one, two, or three. Of the of that total, the attack just misses you. I see. I think that's broken. Well, no. I mean, no, no. That's only physical, and I would probably make it, it cost a bonus act, so it was like once per round. Like you only can do it once per round, and that kind of thing, or make it once per long rest or short right. rest or whatever. So you can do it once per fight. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 I would say once per. Once per like long rest or some shit like that, I think that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Hmm. Um, trying to find some of like the older fucking. Some of the older uh, rules type of thing. Okay, I'm going to give you three more. All right, works for me. Uh, oh, some of these actually might actually work. Storm. Storm is a keyword ability on instants and sorceries that creates a copy of the spell for each spell cast before it in the current turn. Does that make sense? One more time. So Storm, it's a keyword ability on instants and sorceries. So automatically this is going to go to a spellcaster. Okay. Uh, that creates a copy of the spell for each spell cast before it in the current turn. 
It's kind of already in, already in there. Okay. It's a uh, twinned. You know, you can twin a spell where it'll duplicate oh, the, the spell. The sorcery thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love sorcerers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they can just twin a spell like it's pretty dope. Um. So yeah, it's kind of already in there. But I mean, absolutely though. I mean, I think it'll still work. You can make it like a. Uh, you could make it into like a. I would put that in like a ring or something instead. Where like once per you know, once per long rest or whatever, you can pop that out and twin a spell. And I'll, actually, I put it as a ring, so anybody can wear it, and you can cast it. You can so you basically any spell you see, you can twin the spell and target it on somebody else once per once per combat. So like if they heal you and like oh well, we only heal you for you know you're dying really bad. The cleric rolls really shitty on the roll. You fucking heal like eight health and you need it like thirty. You're like right, I'm gonna cast this and twin it, so you roll it again or double the effect of the spell. You know what I mean? That'd be interesting. All right. Here's a super easy one for you. Pro- provoke. Uh, basically, um, I would give you... Okay, uh, basically, you can provoke an enemy. They get a minus one, uh, minus one, two, or three, depending on the level, based upon your, um, you know, what rank you have. And they have to attack you, or they get a minus one, two, or three to everybody else. Okay. And yeah, and like I, I would I rules. would make it a concentration. So if they hit you, you have to roll a concentration to you have to make a con save or whatever to f- fucking keep, keep keep it up, keep provoking. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you know, you were talking all that you know you were talking all that shit a second ago, then you got kicked in your chest, and then now you're like, all right, no, never mind, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> all right, here's an I'm inter- good, yo. Here's an interesting one. And I'd like to see how if this can manage to work or what the the payment would be, like what the downside would be for this. But buyback. So essentially, you may pay an additional cost as you cast a spell. If the buyback cost was paid, put the spell into its owner's hand instead of into that player's library. So essentially, I'm already seeing this as if you pay some form of a cost you don't lose that spell slot for casting that spell. Okay. I just don't know what that cost should be or would be. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a life cost. You know? Yeah. So like flat out, you like if you're willing to take half the spell's damage, you can keep the spell slot. Or maybe it's the full spell's damage, you know? I, I see that one being like a sorcerer one, or even a warlock. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, those are the only ones that I could find that I thought were unique enough to kind of flow. I did, I will say, I did make a notation for both for both Bloodthirst and <clears throat> and haunt for the warlock thing. Mm-hmm. So you might you might see those homebrewed in somewhere. Um or if any of these characters need or any of these players need to make new characters and they either make some form of a fighter slash barbarian or a warlock, I might offer these somewhere in their build. You never know. I'm gonna keep those up though. So those are good. I don't like how this is not in alphabetical order either. This list it made it very hard. Devin's awfully quiet. Yeah, he's maybe getting, he's probably getting his ass kicked in for honor. I'm not actually, but Wait, what are you doing? Why are you so quiet, then? Customizing my character. I mean, I got nothing else to say in the matter. I mean. <laughs> Well, damn it, Devin, I mean, is there any other powers you think would fit into d and I mean, I think we're good. I mean, we covered a lot. I think we're fine. <laughs> I can't think of any other, any more other powers that, it's fine. honestly, off the top of my head. It's fine. I'll have to tell Edquist how much you hate SU and you just, this is just such That's a fine. You do what you gotta do, Webby. Such you know what? a you do what you gotta do. the co you do, the fuck, you do what the fuck you gotta do, bro. Listen! I love you, Devin. <laughs> No, you don't. <laughs> yes, you I do. You fucking gotta do. Oh, you clearly you don't. You motherfucker. Now it's on. 
Now it's on. All right. Uh, well, where can people follow you on the internets there, Devin? Find me at D arrow. No, it's not D arrow. At DMP underscore Pookie. And on Twitch at Pook Killed Me. There you go, sir. What about your Instagram? Ah, whatever. I don't know. I'll try to top my head and it's not important. Oh, all right. I mean, I am not motivated enough to go check it up to just... Exactly. <laughs> what about your Instagram, right? Patrick.Webster52 or whatever? Yep. <laughs> God damn it, you've memorized mine. You don't even know your own? Yeah, because... Nobody ever asked me for my Instagram. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Right. Whatever. As, as I'm not always, a real person. I ain't a real person. As always, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Jax Forestwalker, all one word, and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dmwebby. Uh, when I do stream, please give me a follow, turn the alerts on, and then feel free to harass me in chat. I don't care. Uh, so that's all we got. We covered quite a bit today. Um, we did. And uh, so until next time, everybody, as always, and especially for you, Kurt, fuck Booster Gold. Yep, fuck Booster Gold. Let's do it. Woo!